Hi, today we'll be wiring the Mojave Energy Storage System model OGH ESS 8015A. Our wiring is based on Mojave's ESS planning guide and Inverter's quick start guide wiring section. Perform wiring and practices in accordance with local electrical, building, fire, and other codes for utility requirements as it may vary by location or consult with a solar installer. Note, electrical equipment can pose a shock hazard. Ensure to utilize insulated tools, remove wearable metals, and wear protective gear. All right, before getting started, consider the following. Refer to the Mojave's Inverter Quick Star Guide or inside the wiring compartment for specified torque values and conductor ratings. The lower section of the inverter and the upper section of the battery houses the system wiring. The standard configuration is having the inverter mounted six inches above the battery Use the factory supplied wiring kit if using standard configuration. Install all DC wiring within the raceway. AC wires may not be installed within the raceway. Step 1. AC and DC wiring. Route the battery to inverter ground conductor. Through battery, raceway, to inverter's grounding bus bar and connect. Bring external wires into the inverter's wiring compartment. Connect any other system grounding conductor to inverter's ground bus bar. Route the negative battery conductor through the battery, raceway, and underneath the inverter's plastic shield to the left DC minus bus bar. And connect using a 13 mm socket. Note, Mojave AC connections do not have a neutral to ground bond. If installing off grid, ensure to establish a neutral to ground bond and no more than one bond in the entire system. In grid tight applications, it is customary to install a bond strap at the main service panel. Route the positive battery conductor through the battery, raceway, and underneath the inverter's plastic shield to the right DC plus bus bar and connect. Connect all AC neutral wires including grid, load, and generator if it applies. Connect grid input L1 and L2. Connect load L1 and L2. If a grid dependent inverter is used for AC coupling applications, it must be installed on the protected loads panel. Add a generator input breaker, part number DIN-60D-AC, and connect generator L1 and L2 if it applies. Step 2. Communications Wiring The entire auxiliary terminal block may be unplugged from its socket for easier wiring by turning both black levers or pulling it away from its own socket. To insert wires, push on the release square with a small tool such as a screwdriver or paper clip. Ensure rapid shutdown or RSI jumper is installed in the auxiliary terminal block between pins five and six. Note, the Mojave inverter will go into an RSI fault and will not operate unless a jumper or RSI device is installed. If using the included current transducers, clamp at the main AC panel's service entrance conductors. For correct current readings, ensure the label source is oriented towards the inverter and the arrow towards the grid. The wired end of the CT connects in the auxiliary section using terminals 9 and 11 for the white pairs and terminals 10 and 12 for the black pairs. Connect generator start wires or other accessories into the auxiliary 12 volt or relay ports if it applies. Connect the communications cable in the BMS port of the battery route through the raceway and connect to the BMS CAN port of the inverter. Note, do not connect a remote temperature sensor, or RTS, unless you are installing a lead-acid battery. Connect the network cable for direct user interface connectivity 
if it applies. Secure all communications cable using zip ties, ensuring these do not touch any battery or AC conductors. Well, this concludes the wiring of the Mojave Energy Storage System and is now ready for commissioning. For more information on wiring the Mojave ESS, please refer to the documents linked below. Alright, well thank you for watching and see you next time.